for this year's 16th edition of the Scotiabank Vancouver Half Marathon. Uh, and a wonderful array of talent here. And a wonderful, uh, uh, I think in that array, uh, spread uh, of young uh, and more veteran experienced athletes with our current number one uh, ranked uh, Canadian uh, women's marathoner, Lanny Marchand. Uh, great to have you with us this weekend, Lanny. You had quite a run at Scotia Vancouver, at Scotia Toronto Waterfront Marathon last fall, the 228 flat. Um, since then, you've got your place on the uh, Commonwealth Games team. You'll be running for Canada in five weeks. It's been a year of considerable success. Uh, a decent run at Boston, too. Uh, in with the very top flight uh, in April. But Scotia Vancouver Half hasn't been as kind to you. Uh, can you explain that? Uh, yeah, I kind of had some battles here in 2012. I fractured my ankle about 4K in, I think it was. So uh, came back last year and had a, had a good go. Just didn't feel quite as peppy and strong as I wanted to. And Krista definitely was peppy and strong. So. This year I just want to have a strong race and use this as my proof of fitness for Athletics Canada to show I'm ready to go for Commonwealth Games in five weeks. Um, I'm really fortunate the law firm I'm at right now, um, we went into it eyes wide open and they understood that running was going to be my focus. So that being said, I check in on Mondays and see if what I need to do for the office or what my court docket is going to be like and then otherwise I have my laptop with me all the time and I do research from home, I email and talk to clients from home. Uh, in Kenya, I buy a little internet stick and I make sure I'm connected to the world that way. It's not always reliable, but at least I'm more, more in touch than I'm not. Um, and yeah, it's just, you have to find what works for you. And for me, if I were to run full time, I don't think I'd run any better. I, let, I need that something else going on and something to take me outside of running. Running can be really selfish and self-involved, and I find that nothing puts me in my place more than going to court and having to defend a client and be like, right, but your, your life is, can change drastically right now. Me, like, it's, it's just running, and I, it's a good way for me to keep that balance. Oh, okay, with my daughter. Um, that's just been great. I think it's been good for training because when you get out for your runs, you really wanna you know, make the most of that time. Um, even though she's usually with me on most of the runs now, because she's in the stroller with my husband. Well, my husband's not in the stroller. <laughs> he's, pushing, <laughs> he's pushing the stroller, and she's um, <laughs> Yeah, and living in Corner Brook, Newfoundland, um, it's good for training, well, for some of the months of the year. Uh, the winter was really brutal, but you just make the most of it, you know? Put your shoes on, you go out, and you, know, you do the best you can in the snow, and in the conditions, and uh, I just figure it makes it tougher. It works uh, shift work, and I, I'm a teacher, so I haven't gone back to work this past year. Um, so we just work around his schedule. So luckily, I don't have to get up at 5 a.m. to fit it in. So yeah, in the winter we took turns going, myself, my husband, and then yeah, otherwise we just go. You know, we feel like it did the day. <laughs> Sounds pretty good, actually. Uh, yeah, so no, it's been good scheduling-wise. And how much training are you doing? Are you doing 80k a week, 140 okay. like Sammy, uh, running once a day, twice a day? So, <laughs> sorry, oh god. Okay, so I'm running once a day, and um, I run about 110 to 120 kilometers a week. Um, but I'm going to bump that up now, um, and hopefully the plan is to do the Scotiabank Toronto Waterfront Marathon. So we're going to bump that up and add in some double runs because I'm always just doing single runs, so there's lots of room for the extra mileage. Yeah. How has your wonderful breakthrough performance changed things for you? Has it changed your training? Has it changed your life? And what is that training now? I think the training pretty much stays the same uh, in terms of changing my life. People, well, I got a lot more recognition, so people knew who I was, which is weird. Um, but training was pretty much the same. I train with the Vancouver Falcons and train primarily with guys, and so they still beat me and still don't want me to beat them. So 
so great. It has really changed because they're so sort of faster. So I still have to keep trying to chase them down. And the training, seven days a week, doubles on Tuesday. What sort of level of training are you doing to achieve the performances you are now? Um, anywhere between six and seven days a week. I just train once a day. We started doing double days to start gearing up for Toronto Marathon in the fall. Um, other than that, it's like we range between 140 and 160K a week. Uh, which is kind of on the lower end now, and then we'll gear up again, but I'm not really sure kind of how much training is going to change this time around, because it seemed to work the first time. Yeah. And now you have a, a little more recognition, if not fame and fortune like Lanny. Uh, you have a, a new kit sponsor. What's next for Kim Dirksen? Tomorrow and onwards. <laughs> get more stuff. Like, I don't know. So I got a pair of shoes this weekend, so maybe I'll get two more. I don't know. It's just, she's training. Everything seems to be going well. I don't want to get too caught up in kind of the external stuff, just because it's a lot of extra stress that isn't really necessary to detriment your training. So, I don't know. Go back to basics. I still have to run to be able to perform, so I can't take that away. Uh, the long tempo runs have been really good for me. Um, I train. There's a couple of guys that I tend to train with more frequently, um, and they keep me on pace. So I think that's been really good, is just having those guys to help me through the training runs. Um, but the tempo runs, I'd say, would be the most important thing for my training. Uh, yeah, it's been great. Um, having finished the collegiate, um, my collegiate career, Sometimes a lot of people drop off because they don't have any support, supportive group to train with. So having the BC Endurance Project really helped motivate me to keep training at a uh, high level. Um, having uh, people like Natasha and Dylan, they're pretty inspiring with what they've accomplished. My running's really taken off with Rich as a coach. Um, the workouts, um, his training style, and I really enjoy. So. Yeah, it's, it's a really good program. And any favorite workouts that you like with the group? <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, I really like the, uh, we do a longer progression tempo run, a hilly one, in Stanley Park. You're doing that a lot in the winter. And I really like that. I think it really helped build my um, base. Um, just my overall endurance and strength. And, um, yeah, I, I kind of like all the workouts. Catherine uh, and Marilyn really are BC Uber Masters uh, runners on the end. But I think it might be safe to say you're having a banner year uh, this year, Catherine, uh, training with BC Endurance. Would you like to tell us a few of the secrets there? Um, I think having a fabulous trainer partner like Sabrina Wilkie has been amazing for me. Um, when I first started about a year ago training with her, I was quite a bit behind her and I sort of been chasing and chasing and now we're able to do intervals back and forth, which has been amazing. Um, Rich's program is fabulous. It's uh, really varied, like Serena said. And yeah, it's just, I can't believe how fast I got this year. I'm fitter than I've ever been. So um, two years ago, I was out for about six months and um, with a concussion, came back and slowly started to build and it's just, it's increased from there. And why did you decide, uh, you know, you're a little bit more senior than Kim or Sammy Jabril. Why did you decide now to make this move to hype the high, high performance athletics? Um, I think my kids are at an age now where it's a lot easier for me. They're 8 and 11, so they're in school, and um, it's made it easier for me to get my training in. So that's been a real bonus for me, and I've got a really supportive husband who's sort of said, go for it now, you're running well, um, do what you can, so that's been huge. Yeah, I don't think I can do it without the support of my family, that's for sure. Just a, it's a run technique um, clinic, a series that I run uh, in Victoria, BC. Um, so for me, what's, I feel what's kept me injury free um, as an older athlete um, that runs a lot of miles, I think for my age, um, has been that I've had a pretty good 
foundation with run, run form and run technique, um, which is what I what I teach in my uh, in my clinics. Um, I've actually started running more in the past, you know, three to four years. Um, I used to sort of hover around 100 to 120k, and since I started running for the uh, training for the marathon, um, I've gone up to. I usually am in between the 150 to 200k range, sort of in that higher end, which has helped me because I had to. I, I started late. I was only 35 when I started running, so the mileage is actually, I think, helped me. It's not for everybody, but um, it's helped my engine. So that that's been that's what's helped me a lot is um, just slowly etching up that that mileage. Agree. Although I'm not running anywhere near as many miles as Marilyn is. Um, I didn't get into running. I ran competitively as a youth and then took lots of time off and just kind of ran for fun. So I've only got back into it in the last six years as well. And um, I've slowly got my mileage up, although I don't go much above 140 in a few weeks at this point. Although I'm thinking of a marathon in the fall, um, possibly Toronto. So that will, that will definitely bump the mileage up again, I'm sure. Um, I think for me, it's the challenge of it. I really enjoy training for marathons. Um, you have to think a lot. Like, I understand in track races, you're worrying about pace and you're thinking like that, but the marathon, it's more making sure you're, it's a controlled effort and you're, the last 10K, it doesn't matter how well your training has gone, that last 10K, it just comes down to a guts and glory race. Um, and I, for me, that's the draw of it, that I know I can, I always finish, and as great as Toronto was this past fall, I know I can do better that last 10K, and each time I go back, I just want to conquer that last 10K beast. Um, I've never actually done a marathon, and don't have one in the immediate future plan, but I definitely would like to do one at some point. Um, yeah, I think the distance is just kind of, Special. It's um, other than ultras, it's kind of the longest distance out there. I'm the same with Lance in the sense of like I love I love the training for it, um, and then it's that last 10 day where you can like it makes or breaks you, and so it's kind of a matter of like who can survive the distance the best as opposed to who can race the distance the best. Um, but that kind of like all out, but you don't get the same feeling after a marathon as you do after any other sort of race, or at least not in my opinion. Um, and it sucks. When you cross the finish line, because it hurts, but it's probably one of the best hurts you can have when you run I Lovely Twitter quote there, one of the best hurts you can have. <laughs> and uh, Kate, uh, childbirth wasn't enough of a hurt for you. You decided in Houston in January you had to do a marathon. Yeah, yeah I, I run one marathon and that was in January in Houston. Um, and I was really looking forward to it. They're talking about the last 10K and I remember the night before I was talking to my coach and I said, I'm really excited for like the last 7 to 10K. Like, I want to I, I know what everyone's talking about, like that feeling. And it was awful. <laughs> <laughs> But, but it was really it was really great and it, it was just such a rewarding race and and I came away from it just thinking you know how much I'd like to improve and there's just so much so much improvement to be made in the marathon and yeah I just think it's uh, I don't know it's really appealing in a lot of ways training and everything and then uh, Marilyn I'm delighted to say that after one year helping you into a wheelchair at the finish line <laughs> at the Scotiabank Toronto Waterfront Marathon. You came back the next year. Yeah, I came back for more pain. <laughs> uh, What's special about the marathon? Um, well, you know, to be honest, the reason I, I ran my first marathon was I was running out of time being 45 when I ran my first one. I just knew it was either then or, or not. <laughs> and um, it actually got me fitter. So I felt the training for that race actually boosted my fitness um, so I, that's why I decided to run a second one and again I think I think the training for that actually popped me up to another fitness level as I'm aging I'm not getting much slower so I think it actually is helping my fitness and, and Catherine after hearing all of this why are you doing it I'm not sure now <laughs> I'm a little nervous. 
Uh, I like the idea of the challenge of it. I'm, I'm excited to try something new. I figure this year is the peak fitness for me. I've, I've done really well, so why not? Why not go for the ultimate? Yes, and finish off with the marathon this year. Uh, first off, Lanny, um, you're sort of in a, in a class by yourself in this particular race. You ran a 110.47 in the Tom King Classic Half Marathon in Nashville this spring. Um, are you just are you here today to to maybe just try to break that 110 barrier, the magic barrier? As much as I'd like to say I'm gonna go dip under 110, uh, I don't know training wise and workout wise and with Commonwealth Games July 27th if that like my coach and I have kind of decided that if I'm feeling really good, go for it. But it's not necessarily worth it to, t to gas myself that much this weekend and expect to be able to turn around and put a solid one in for Commonwealth Games. So the goal this weekend is to run strong and try to run cons uh, run conservative down that really steep long hill. Like Dylan, I have some hip hamstring issues, so it's not something that I want to hammer down that hill, but I want to really focus on, and the focus this spring has been on the second half of my race, and I want to really be able to attack Burrard Street Bridge and come in a lot stronger than I did last year, and obviously a lot stronger than I did in 2012. Okay, um, well, like I said, I was with a, another law firm, and it was my birthday, and I was en route to the airport for to go run Rotterdam, where I ran my 231, um, and I got an email telling me basically that I was distracted by running and I had to pick. And I was already, in my mind, if they've already got to the point where they felt they had to send an email and not talk to me about it, if I picked the law, I was gonna come back and it wasn't gonna be a good environment. So I hopped on that plane to Rotterdam and kind of put it, checked it on the shelf and ran the race. Um, figured I'd try and go for an Olympic time, why not? Uh, didn't run the Olympic qualifying time either, so when I crossed that finish line, that's where kind of everything hit. I was excited about a 13 minute PB, but then also was like, oh right, when I fly back home to the US, I'm on a work visa down there. I kind of have to figure out what I'm gonna do. So it was, you know, everybody has challenges in their life and everybody has, there's anything can go wrong and anything can happen and you have to learn to put things in their compartment. You can't, you want to run with emotion, and I definitely ran with emotion that day, but I channeled it into something positive as opposed to having a woe is me moment. Uh, uh, thank you all so much for choosing uh, to come run the Scotiabank Vancouver Half Marathon.